Um, I thanks for joining in tonight. We're just at six o'clock now. Um, I can see I'm on the big screen in the city council chambers <laughs> here, which just feels a little awkward from here. Um, I'm sure others will be joining us. Um, as we okay, there's no sound here yet. Okay, I'll just hold off a second. Alec, I could hear you earlier when you were saying, could I, can you hear me? And I was on mute. So um, we can hear, we could hear you earlier. And you can hear me now. You're not Can you hear me now? Okay, that's just the, the computer. So we can make that work. So what's uh -huh. so I'm, I'm, I'm muted. We can hear you. You sound like the voice of God. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's see if we can switch it. Alex, I wonder if you need that computer and can you do audio from the mic? Yeah, unplug it. Um, like, like, sorry, what were we doing? Um, we, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Test one, test two. Can you hear us? That is better. Okay, excellent. I think we're I think we're in pretty good shape here. Okay, excellent. Um, well, it is 6.03 now. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, starting off with um, introductions from each of the commissioners that are here present. Uh, my name is Kasha Ranjo. I am the chair of the Parks Commission. You know, expand the video. Andrew? Uh, Andrew Brewer, also oh, a member of the commission. Okay. Do you mind saying that again? Because I think Lincoln, oh, I think you might have gotten cut off. Andrew Brewer, also a member of the commission. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Lincoln, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hi, everybody. Lincoln Frasca, Parks Commissioner. And um, Lincoln is in person in the City Hall Council Chambers. Um, Emily, I know you're just joining us now. If you don't mind going ahead and introducing yourself quickly. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm also a Parks Commissioner. I, I'm, I'm eating dinner, so I'm <laughs> turning my video, but I will be here and we'll turn it back on when I'm done eating. <clears throat> Perfect. We definitely understand the nature of Zoom calls. Um, <laughs> All right, um, and then for staff here, we have Alec in person um, in the city hall chambers, and then um, Matt Wilson is also on city, city staff who I see here on Zoom. Um, let's go ahead um, and- um, Gosh, we, we, have... we do have some folks here in person. Do you want them to introduce themselves or names or how? You know what, um, let's- um, why don't you pass around a piece of paper to collect everyone's names of those who are present in person. And for those of you who joined us on the computer, if you can type into the chat, just type your name of yourself and anybody who's joining you. If there's, you know, two or three people, um, you know, joining from the same computer, drop your names in the chat. Um, and that way we'll have a record of everyone who was here from the public. 
Does that work for everybody? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for thinking of that. Um, all right. The February 7th agenda and January 17 minutes. Um, I did before we just um, uh, prove and go through with these as we usually do. On the agenda, I just noticed um, Alec has some really fantastic updates. He's been working really hard while we've all been working really hard on the management plan. Um, and I would love to find 15 minutes or so at the end of the agenda for Alec to give a staff update, um, if that's okay with everybody on the commission. So that would be a minor adjustment to tonight's agenda. Um, so I will motion that we add a staff update for 15 minutes at the close of the agenda. Um, and then, yes, Andrew. Just got to offer a motion when time is ready. Okay. Um, so I'm not exactly sure the process here, but let's say I made, I made a motion to add a staff update. Um, and let's get a second to that motion. I second that motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. So passes unanimously. Anybody opposed? All right. So um, then we need a motion for approving the February 7th agenda as amended and the seven, January 17th minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. Emily, thank you. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Lincoln, I can't see you. He's waving. Aye. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, any, anyone opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. All right, excellent. Thank you for that little point of order. Um, for anybody just joining us now, again, if you could just drop your names in the chat, that would be helpful. Or if you're there in person, um, Lincoln and Alec are handing around a sign up sheet to add your names to. Um, and thank you for being here tonight. I did want to um, pause a minute for public comment. Um, we will have an opportunity for public comment on things that are later on the agenda, including the management plan and um, the dogs topic specifically, um, but if anybody has public comment on other aspects of parks, um, I will pause. Can you bring me one? All right, so hearing none, um, okay. let's move on to um, a brief announcement from um, Alec. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, the announcement is that, uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, the announcement is just to uh, share information about the Country Club Road uh, outreach. Um, we're currently in phase two of what's um, proposed to be a three phase project here. Um, and there are three public meetings as part of phase two that are um, asking people to come weigh in on um, potential uses for what could be on the property, um, really reacting to the balance of housing versus recreation versus other ideas that have come up. Um, I'm just trying to get their flyer up. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but there's so there's one more public meeting as part of phase two, uh, which is on Thursday from 12 to one. It's on Zoom. It's only on Zoom. And um, there's also a survey and you can find all that information at the city website, MontpelierVermont.org. It's right on the front page. That is all. Excellent. Thanks, Alec. And um, for those of you joining on Zoom, I did drop into the chat the link to the survey, as well as the information for the public meeting. Um, although I guess the Zoom meeting. Zoom link for the meeting didn't come through on chat, but it is on the same city website with the survey. Um, all right, let's go um, ahead and jump into um, why many of us are here tonight, which is to talk about the draft management plan and ecological assessment. Um, and this is a, 
um, work that the Parks Commission has been doing for the last year, really. Um, for those of you who may be um, just joining us for the first time or have been part of this process um, right since the beginning, um, this is a process that began about a year ago. Our, our parks um, do, do not have current management plans, um, which is a challenge for um, setting the vision and going forward and, and just um, setting the future of these parks. So um, we really started this, I guess, two years ago, tackling a plan for Blanchard Park, um, which we finalized about this time last year. It's a little small park right in downtown Montpelier. If you haven't been there, it's it's a delight. Um, and then this year we're tackling, of course, Hubbard Park and North Branch River Park. And so over the last year, we've had um, public engagement opportunities. They've There have been um, over a dozen walks in the park led by commissioners and field naturalists and um, an online survey and parks commission meetings and and uh, um, open um, open house style forum, and so building off of that, um, we've been working on two parts of the management plan um, that really sync together, but um, are easiest to digest in two parts. So um, I'm going to turn things over to Emily, um, who's been working on kind of the meat of the management plan and the context and the overview and the history and all the pieces um, that surround the action table. Um, and then I'll talk about the action table. Emily. Great, thanks, Kasha. Um, yeah, so our management plan has uh, five chapters and uh, I've spent a lot of time working on the history um, the last few weeks because we had a little miscommunication and the history section of the environmental assessment was really quite brief. So um, we have a little bit more of a robust history now. We have a section on existing conditions and impacts to the park that are current. Um, and then the objectives and recommended actions table, which Kosh is going to talk about. And after that, there's a section on potential impacts based on those recommended actions. And chapter five is the actions that are considered that were considered but not adopted. Um, there are a couple of appendices as well. There's an ecolo the, the ecological assessment is, is one of the appendix appendices, um, park rules and regulations, uh, a summary of community input and survey analysis, and um, a management plan and environmental assessment timeline. So it really just tries to give a very full picture of how this project evolved and why and what went into it and um, hopefully presents a, a clear guide for the Parks Commission and the Park staff to follow um, for the next 10 years. There will be um, a review after five years of, the, of everything in this plan will be kind of reviewed and then I guess in 10 years, it will be revisited more comprehensively and kind of um, re-updated kind of, and, and the next 10 years will be looked at. Um, and I think um, it's important to know a couple of things. I dropped a link to the um, documents to download in the chat if anybody hasn't found them with the parks agenda and, and whatnot already. Um, so take a look and, and detail there. Um, I think it's important to note this is still a draft. It's something that we're working on. So there are some highlights. There are some details to fill in, some um, additional documents that we're tracking down so that we can make this as comprehensive as possible. Um, and it has, we'll have multiple appendices, including a really thorough ecological assessment of the two parks, um, and um, which we, we really haven't had to date as a resource. Some of the information from the surveys that have um, been carried out over the last couple of years and that kind of information as kind of a snapshot in time of um, the information that went into guiding the management plan and um, where we are as a community right now. One other point that's important to emphasize is that the management plan itself is kind of a, a working document that's going to, like I said, it'll be reviewed in five minutes, five years, five minutes, five years, and then again in 10 years. And it's like, it's supposed to change as like community demands and interests and the environment and everything change. Great. Um... And then the other piece of this um, is the action table, which I um, believe you can also 
um, access from the link I put dropped in the chat and and with the agenda packet. Um, and the action table is kind of the the um, the meat or where the rubber hits the road for the entire ma management plan of taking all the context and information and um, putting goals and objectives and actions in into play. And so um, this again is still a draft. Um, it will be within the management plan, but it's just helpful to look at as a separate document for the purposes of review and discussion. Um, um, the a few things we shared this um, a first. Um, draft of this action table at our December meeting. Many of you may have been there. Um, and we're I just so grateful for the people who showed up to that meeting, who have emailed us comments on the draft. They, uh, you know, attending this, um, our December and January meetings, um, filling out the online form that we had to collect information for a while. And a lot of that is in incorporated into this updated draft that's here tonight. Um, and just really appreciate the public participation to shape um, because a lot um, the purpose of this whole process is to allow all, um, make space for everybody in the community to to be part of this and to reflect the community. Um, I froze on my computer. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Frozen. Yeah, you fro well now you're you gone dark, but we can hear you. Okay, I just stopped my video, um, so you don't need to look at my frozen face. <laughs> I'm glad you can still hear me. Um, just a few changes from December until now that I just want to highlight. Um, first and foremost, I think um, that people will notice a change in the the format. And so um, the when we started down this path, we had kind of divided the parks into multiple zones and then we were looking at the zones separately and then merged that together to look at each of the parks separately. And then what we realized is that what we're trying to do here is really have a holistic um, picture. And there were a lot of redundant things that um, were relevant across both the parks. So we really merged the two parks together for a much more holistic um, uh, action table, which reflects kind of the connectivity between the parks, both ecologically and also recreationally. Um, we also um, did a lot of work to tighten up the language. Emily um, was really ex helpful with this in terms of just looking at language consistencies and words consistencies and making sure that we're as clear as possible um, throughout the entire plan. Um, we also, we added a potential partners co um, column. This surfaced from um, some of you as community, community members saying, who's gonna do this? The reality is that us as the Parks Commission or Park staff can't do any of this alone. Um, and so these are the people that we will be likely turning to and more to help to implement to the, some of these things, whether that's by informing or um, be, taking action and being responsible for the actions here. Um, a few of the um, notable content changes just to highlight here. Um, at our December meeting, people will remember that there were uh, many people, um, neighbors on the course street um, and some also on Parkway, um, you know, with some questions and speaking up around road closures. The course street piece is, is removed from this. That's not here anymore and just wanted to be clear about that. Um, there, um, there was a lot of, we received multiple suggestions on um, refining the language around the trails on the new parcel and also from um, seven fireplaces to North Park Drive or Elm Street area. And so we really fine tune that language, refine the language. And I think really helpfully um, at the suggestion of Alec or maybe also some members of the public um, reference the Vermont Town Forest Trail design um, for those pieces, which I think adds a lot to the plan. Um, and goal nine, um, which is at the very bottom and um, is what I kind of think of as the ecological communities goal, um, that addresses a variety of ecological communities from old forests and open meadows. Um, we also um, added a section specifically related to rivers and wetlands and water to this section. Um, and this was due to some really specific and helpful comments that we got over the last month or two um, from some local experts um, in wetlands ecology um, and, and rivers and um, wanted to make sure that we incorporate those pieces into the ecological section. So that's, um, that's new. Um, 
we'll talk about dogs shortly. And I want to pull that piece out specifically, because I know people are really interested in that piece. Um, but in absence of the dog issue, which we'll get to in a second, um, I just want to pause and see if any of the other commissioners have anything to add to this kind of brief overview. And the plan for the evening um, before we do that is just to have this overview, have discussion around dogs specifically, and then back up again to the plan as a whole um, and look at other specific actions or elements of the um, management plan um, and next steps for us as a commission. Um, and hopefully that will help make the best use of everybody's time here tonight. Um, so with that, um, any questions, updates, anything from the Parks Commissioners? Kasha, I'll jump in and try to speak hybridly. So my back is turned to the people who came in person and people who came virtually. Um, but yeah, just broadly uh, to, to the to the actions uh, table and the goals, objectives, actions table that we've been working on. The, uh, like I just wanted to highlight the process and you know where we started off in very site specific kind of detail oriented doing walks looking at specific specific areas that people appreciated and wanted to see change um, you know and then we would kind of analyze those those comments and those meetings into sort of more you know action items and and you know the park separately and where we're at now you know which is I I'm really happy with is like this merging into kind of like the the bigger picture of yeah we have these site specific action items but we're also looking at these parks as a whole and taking into account past present and future and it is a very visionary document if I do say so myself and I think each one of these actions will need its own management plan um, but we crammed a decade's worth of, of planning into this last year and, um, you know, I, I think we did a pretty good job of, of casting a broad net and then also trying to look at the site specific things that, that, you know, fall through the cracks of those big ticket kind of goals. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that now just for kind of uh, my two cents and, and we can jump into specifics here. Great. Thanks, Lincoln. All right. Anything else to add before we um, launch into the um, dog discussion? Okay, um, let me see if I can take my, put myself back on video because I feel very absent not being able to see as we launch into this. Um, and then if any of you are listening and wanna put yourselves on video, you're welcome to do that, of course. Um, I wanted to thank you all for, for being here and um, for really, um, speaking up and being part of this issue specifically. And like I said earlier, um, a lot, the entire management plan is, you know, we, we stepped into this in a space of wanting to listen to our friends and neighbors and community members to do our best by our parks that we can as commissioners. And so your participation is really essential to that. And um, whether you're able to be here tonight, I know many people emailed us and couldn't be here um, and just want to say that you know, you've been heard, you're part of the conversation, and this is not the end of the conversation. This is, you know, a, a continuing conversation. Um, and as I see some more people joining us, um, just want to mention if anybody is joining us, if you could just drop your name in the chat so that we can um, catch your name to for the minutes, that would be great. Um, and um, I think, you know, a lot of the things that we're hearing are probably not surprising. We're hearing that People who walk their dogs love being able to walk their dogs off leash and people who don't, uh, and there are also people who don't love people walking their dogs off leash. I think that's a known in our community, right? Um, and uh, as we head into the conversation tonight, I want to just share a few things. One is there, we're not making any decision tonight. And so I hope that makes, relieves the weight off of us as commissioners and also of you as the public, we're here to listen um, and, and have this conversation together. And it's not like there needs to be a decision tonight. Um, and so um, I think that it's most helpful to keep this conversation solutions, solutions oriented. Um, 
And in order to help inform us, what we're trying to do is create a management plan, which is kind of a suite of solutions for the park across all topic areas, including this. Um, and in order to be in a solution space, I think it's really important that we're all thinking about the same challenge that we're trying to solve. And so I want to just say this is not anything that's in the draft plan, the discussion tonight. We're not having this discussion um, because of poor behavior of dogs, or it's not some kind of critique of dogs in the park. Um, I think for, we could even assume that every single dog and every single dog owner is just impeccable behavior and just the very best, loveliest dog, just like my own, that we would all like to have. Um, and I also, um, this is not us as commissioners, like out to get dogs or dog owners or anything like this. This is us trying to be responsive and responsible managers of the of the park um and so i if those aren't the challenge i think um the challenge to me and i think to us as a commission is really rooted in this mission statement that um the commission adopted probably three or four years ago now um and may have had a version of this before then but our mission statement at the top of all of our agendas, it says the Parks Commission advances a long-term vision to ensure that parks, gardens, greenways, and natural areas are vital to Montpelier's community identity and forever available for the enjoyment of all. And I think it's that last piece there about being forever and available for the enjoyment of all is the challenge that we're really trying to figure out a solution to. And so um, I think what we've heard in conversations with neighbors and guided walks and surveys, what we're hearing as a commissioner is that there are many people, we hear that, ever, that people really love dogs. We are also hearing that there are many people in our communities who are our collective neighbors and friends um, who don't feel safe and welcome to come to Hubbard Park, which is really our kind of flagship iconic park as a community. If you think of um, our parks in town, it's it's the Hubbard Tower that comes to mind, I think for a lot of people. Um, and there are some people who don't feel safe and welcome because there are dogs off leash. And so I think the question is, what can we all do as a community to ensure that all people have a chance to know and to love the parks that we all know and love so much? And these places that are so near and dear to our hearts, how can we ensure that all people can come to know some of these places and have that experience? Um, so as and try and us as a commission trying to answer this question, um, we created really as a visual for tonight, um, kind of a continuum of options, um, which in fact, maybe Emily or Andrew, Emily. Could you maybe pull that up and just do a screen share and we can have that as a visual? Okay, great. Um, and so this continuum of, continuum of options, um, Emily's gonna pull it up. It's definitely not comprehensive, um, but really is just kind of a visual to guide our conversation. Um, and everything within the continuum from having no dogs at all in Hubbard Park, whether they're on leash or not, or not, to having dogs off leash everywhere in Hubbard Park um, and all the pieces in, in between, these are really some of the solutions that have come from your neighbors. These are things that have been proposed in various forms to us as commissioners um, and really just kind of shows the spectrum of possibilities, um, which is of course infinite. There are infinite ways to kind of dissect days and times and places and all of that. So this is just meant as kind of a, a basic tool for our conversation. Um, and I think um, the latest, you know, as commissioners, we've talked about this, that this comes up really, all, I've been on the com commission for almost five years now, and it comes up many times a year, every year. Um, in the last several months, the kind of the pieces um, when we were trying to think, well, how do we make sure our parks are welcoming to all? Um, the, the pieces that we've talked about, a whole range of pieces here, 
And the piece that's in the draft management plan, which again is a draft and is not going to, you know, we don't have to adopt tonight. Um, I just want to share what that is because I think that there's been some confusion. We've gotten some emails of people thinking that we're kicking dogs out of all of Hubbard Park or having leashes everywhere. Um, and I just wanted to be clear on what the even the draft proposal is. Um, so the latest um, iteration is, is really captured in the draft action table. Um, it would add a new dog waste station at what would be a new trailhead at Wyndham Drive um, at the southern edge of the new parcel. Um, it would require dogs to be on leashes on two trails, the Stone Tower Path and the brand new interpretive trail. I think a lot of people have come to know it also as the accessible trail. Um, it would require leashes on roads, which is no change. That's our already city ordinance already requires dogs to be leashed on roads. And this is simply kind of surfacing it in the plan and reiterating that there. Um, and would require dogs to be on leash in parking areas, which is a space where dogs are excited. People are distracted getting in and out of cars. And we've seen when some of the, many of incidents go unreported. And, but when they are, some of them are happening in parking areas and seem like that would cut down on some of the, um, kind of challenges of, of, and making people feel like they're in a safer space. Um, and a couple things that are also in here, um, we heard from people when we initially proposed this in December, I guess it was, um, people saying, oh, if dogs are, have to be leashed in a parking area, what about that kind of doggy play area that's at the elbow in Parkway? Dogs like to run around there. Would that mean you couldn't use that space? Um, so one of the things that's in this newest version is to have like a basically like a single sided fence between the parking and that doggy play area so that, you know, dogs could run around and be free and have and also have that kind of barrier. So they're not like running straight out into the road or anything like that um, and have that separation from parking. Um, and then also in the earlier version of this, um, it had dogs to be leashed on uh, within 150 feet of um, trailhead trails and trailheads and parking areas. And we've taken that out as well. We talked about that in January and decided that that didn't make sense. So, um, that's, that's kind of what's in the draft right now. It doesn't have to be the path forward. As you can see on the continuum, there are kind of a multitude of possibilities. Um, and I think that's just kind of to say, to you all that we would love to hear from you. We're here to listen and want to hear your ideas in terms of what can we do as a community to make sure that all people, again, have the chance to know and love these special places and the, these parks that we really love. So I'm gonna turn it over to, unless commissioners have anything to add, I'm gonna turn it over to the to the public to speak up. No, nice job, Kasia. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks for summarizing, Kasha. I also just wanted to say uh, I'm really grateful for all the participation from people. We've gotten so many emails, and I'm sorry if we haven't responded to them or or made a clear statement of changing our plans. But it's we've gotten flooded, and it just is a reflection of like how much people love these parks. So it's all good. We're just very busy. So I'm glad that we're having a chance to discuss tonight and. Hopefully we'll work. Yeah, I, I would add, I think I tried to reply to everybody for a little while and then I <laughs> quickly gave up. I can't keep up with them. So, but thank you very much for all the comments and for everybody weighing in. Great. Mm. Okay, that, that was great. Yep, I've got nothing to add at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, and Lincoln, if you can help us with the room in person and, you know, with the hybrid model, just if, if anybody wants to speak us up, let us know if there's somebody there or on the computer. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but Stephanie's joined us. Oh, fantastic. Um, Hi, Stephanie, everyone. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> um, Stephanie, could you please um, formally introduce yourself for our recording? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm Stephanie Hunt. I'm one of the Parks Commissioners. Um, I'm happy to be able to be part of this conversation tonight. Thank you. All right. I see a hand from Joe Castellano. Yeah, hi, thank you so much. I'm gonna lower my hand right now. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. I did send out an email earlier this week that I believe Alex distributed to the rest of the um, commission. And my comment is I take my dog, I live over on Saban Street in Montpelier, and I take my dog across town to socialize with other dogs in Hubbard Park. 
And for a lot of dog owners, it's actually a real community. I mean, we know people, and as a matter of fact, there's one dog owner who has dog parties at his place a couple of times a year for all the people that he knows and has met through dogs at, that we all socialize with. And it creates a real sense of community that I would feel that we would lose if dogs were required to be leashed on a lot of the trails. And unfortunately, the Stone Tower Path, which tends to be one of the more popular ones, is where a lot of us tend to socialize. And we'll talk about, you know, we'll catch up on things if we haven't seen somebody or we'll talk about health issues, what's happened with so-and-so. So I, I hope that we can keep the same programs and the same rules in place. But I also realize there are people who are very, very fearful of dogs. And I, I certainly have seen how front porch forum lights up. It's one of the few topics that gets front porch forum to go off absolute crazy. You know, the pro dog and the anti-dog camp. So anyway, <laughs> that's my that's my thought. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Yeah, just, yeah, come on up. Yep. Some, like, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to kind of open up the in person floor now. And um, if folks will come up and just please introduce yourself and your name and maybe where you live and follow this uh, speaker note intro. Okay. Okay. Take it off. I am Rebecca Copans. I live on um, Cliff Street, which is right on the edge of Hubbard Park. Um, so I just want to remind you that in 2017, we as a, as a community voted about the dog issue. It was um, a definitive vote in favor of keeping dogs off leash in Hubbard Park. Um, this was a incredibly polarizing issue then. And it's, I, it's always shocking to me that, that when, when people want to weigh, <laughs> wade into it again, because it's um, always going to be a polarizing issue. Um, so, I walk in the park every day with my dog, my dogs, um, and often my neighbor's dogs as well. Um, a lot of the people that I see every day um, are, they use the, the main big trails because they are unsteady on their feet and they are dog walkers. And so choosing um, you know, the widest, most accessible trail to be on leash um, is arbitrary. Um, and then I think, a better solution would be to say if you if you want to create a, a space where um, a time when people should be leashed um, make it specific two to four on saturday and sunday um, and that allows everyone to be able to um, keep their you know their the mental and physical wellness routines that they have now but also be more inclusive and it doesn't create this you know winners and lo losers that this proposal is is really setting up um, we feel like um, I mean, I've been, I've been walking my dogs every day, unless I'm sick or not home every single day. Um, and everyone that I see in the park, they're daily users as well. Um, a lot of them are going to keep using the park as they always have. And it's going to create this really terrible confrontation, I think. Um, and so I worry about this kind of winner or loser concept. Um, the parking lot issue is totally arbitrary. Um, if you are concerned about people getting out of the car with their dogs, um, because they, they're excited and they get, they jump out of the car and they start running around, make that the specific issue, you know, have, ask people to put their dog on a leash before they get out of the car until they're on the trail. Um, and so they're not, you know, it's, they're not just entering so abruptly. Um, there's a wide swath of land, um, that is, that's restricted to, um, on leash dogs. It's North Branch Park. And, um, the argument that people can't can't enjoy nature without dogs running around is just not true because it's a larger as large as I think a swath of land as Hubbard Park, um, and I think creating this policy will push people that are have off leash dogs into into North Branch Park and make more of a confrontation there. Um, so I just want to reiterate what the person before me said: the community is is a really wonderful one in, in the park. Um, there are people that I see every day that I suspect I may be the only human they see. And I say hello to them. We know each other. When people don't see them, you know, we wonder and we ask and we say, you know, we follow up with them. Um, there is an incredible wellness, mental health and physical health um, component to the dog community. Um, and I think it's 
it's a community that would be really impacted um, if if we lost the the current um, makeup. Um, so I ask I ask everyone I see in the park what they think of this policy. Most people haven't heard of it. Um, I would recommend that you go into the park, like physically into the park, and do a do a data you know a data get a data gathering project like the bio. Um, you know, like the, the bird count, um, but with actual people in the actual park rather than asking broadly, um, because, you know, it's the beginning of February. Most people made a New Year's resolution in January. I bet you most of them have not um, kept with it. Um, and it's the same with people that are surveyed. Um, if you ask anyone in the world, would you walk more? I'd be like, oh, yes, I would walk more if, if you did these things. I would encourage you to let's, let's, um, Give the people the benefit of the doubt that are actually using the park now, rather than saying, you know, making this resolution that someday maybe they'll do it um, if if certain things are, are met. So I just want to summarize: create a short window of time, like two to four on Saturday and Sunday. Leash leashing within the the parking lot is totally arbitrary, and get more data from actual park users. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going back to the <laughs> Um, could we um? unshare the or unshare the screen so that uh, the person sitting so folks could see the person sitting here great idea thank you okay in-person comments not your only chance but we kind of opened it up to help the flow thanks sure i'll go for it does this is it this? is that right it's fine it's good okay all right i'm uh Thank you. Thank you so much for having this time tonight. I really appreciate it. I'm Jessa Barnard. I live on Bailey Ave, um, so kind of off the side of the, the Stone Tower Trail. Um, again, I really appreciate this additional public input opportunity. I think that's unfortunately what had sort of been missing is some focused discussion on this topic. Um, I hope that can continue, as you said, and thank you for saying there's you know no decisions tonight and some more time on this. I, I personally think it would be um, unfortunate, actually, to maybe even solve this problem one way or another within an excellent park management plan that really has consensus and a lot of public buy-in about the futures of our park and instead sort of bookmark it as a this is a project for the park commission to solve over the next, however, six months to a year. Um, I really think it could benefit from more focused discussions. I appreciate seeing the sort of, uh, I call it the timeline of options, the continuum of options. I think that's really worth exploring more. As Rebecca before me said, I think that could, I think there's an opportunity to get that specific level of feedback from um, for everybody who, you know, people who currently use the park, people who say that they could use the park, what actually might make them feel safer in the park. I really do worry that the current proposal will lead to future conflict because you know knowing those trails really well those trails are intersected by a bunch of others that would continue to be off leash so the acorn trail ravine trail tower circle trail the tower road um so i i think it is setting up people who don't feel safe around dogs to think they will be in sort of a completely dog free zone um but in fact i think it could increase um interactions and then lead to more upset you know, walkers on both sides, more reports, and then um, unfortunately more trails being closed to off-leash dog walking, which I think is um, for those like me who use the park on a daily basis with our dog, we sort of see this not as a final answer, but as a first step towards closing more trails. And so I think that's part of the fear you're hearing. I know, I know you're saying it's only two trails, you know, it's, it's a small portion of the park, but it feels like kind of the first step in many. And in fact, the first step along a continuum of other parks already being closed, like North Branch, the Elks Club, you know, it feels like this is the only off-leash area remaining. And so we really hate to lose that safe place for people can, who can walk, especially as you heard from people who may be less stable, have disabilities. I saw a comment on Front Porch Forum of a woman who was pregnant. You know, it is the safe flat trail where people can currently walk their dogs off leash. For me as a cross country skier, um, and I just saw that mentioned in the full plan, so I appreciate that. It's really the one place I can safely cross country ski with my dog because cross country skiing with a dog on leash really isn't a very um, safe option. <laughs> I'm working on that, but still not going so well. Um, so I, I really think if this is an area that Parks Commission wants to continue to explore, um, I would encourage you and I would be happy to you know help with this. I'm sure there are many in the room who would be happy to do more work. Like let's put those continuums of options into a survey, gather more feedback. You know, I think the, the hours option holds some 
potential. I was actually, what occurred to me today is what about seasonal? You know, so for example, in the winter when there's cross country skiing, could we still ski on the Stone Tower Trail? Um, so I think there are options. I think it would be unfortunate to rush into a decision without really getting more broad input from those of us either on the commission or just in the room tonight of what might actually help solve the problem. I also think, um, Personally, I would say, you know, if this is sort of a compromise about having everybody feel welcome in the parks, if there is a, a, a loss of off-leash walking at Hubbard Park, I think it should be paired with some off-leash walking options at the other parks. Um, so if there are some hours added at Hubbard that would be closed to off-leash walking, could there be some off-leash walking hours at another location so that um, everybody has um, access to all the parks, which I think is the goal of the Parks Commission. Um, so thank you. I really appreciate the time of the commission tonight and happy to keep working with you and hope for future opportunities for dialogue. Thanks. And thank you. Actually, I just want to say quickly, um, thank you. I do really support the, I saw the changes about the um, fence at the dog park location. I call it the dog park location the, and getting rid of the 150 foot perimeter um, piece. And I think those really are, um, I really appreciate seeing those changes. So thanks. Uh, good evening, Tim Duggan. I live on Parkside Drive uh, near the park, and I uh, wanted to start by saying, uh, you know, recognize all the work that you all have done on our behalf for the last year, and, um, you know, it's a lot. You guys are volunteers, and I really appreciate it, um, so I just wanted to start with that. I sent around um, prob probably overly verbose comments to the Parks Commission <laughs> earlier today, so I just wanted to sort of raise the high point, you know, the the chart that you had just shown kind of really crystallized uh, the idea of compromise uh, to me. And, you know, seeing at one end of the chart, the status quo with uh, dogs off leash in Hubbard Park and the other complete ban, I think really sort of misses where where we are today. I think we, we sort of have a, an existing compromise where we have a park, a dedicated place for off leash dogs, and then everywhere else in town as the place for unleashed dogs. So I feel like, you know, when 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 the the issue is framed where the status quo is all the way off to the right, rather than being in the middle, um, it kind of frames the discussion in a way that everything's got to knock down from there. And I just don't think that's the the way to look at this right now. Uh, Jessa, I think did a great job of, of talking about the idea of, you know, if this is a compromise where the goal is not to set up a winner and a loser, um, then you want to really start from the place that recognizes today's sort of a compromise. And um, if there is a diminution in ability to experience the park in your preferred way, on the one hand, uh, there should be some gain on the other hand. Um, I, so I do think that this is a topic that is worthy of further discussion. You know, it's a hot button issue for sure. Um, recognizing that you folks have done a lot of work on this. This took a lot of us who, you know, I'm not on social media. Fortunately, uh, I'm friends with Jessa and she told me that this was happening uh, in December. So I, I, I became alerted to it. I didn't see any signs in the park about it. Um, notifications that there's a draft management plan under consideration would never lead me to believe that the hot button dog issue was being taken up. So I, I really feel like the, the conversation to date, you know, it's there's been folks who prefer the uh, an off leash Hubbard Park uh, have been playing catch up in some ways. And I'd, I'd ask that you sort of make the space to hear that voice. And I think you'll find that a lot of us are very cognizant of, you know, our friends and neighbors who want to experience the park without a dog running right up to them. Um, I think there are ways to, uh, before taking a sort of more heavy handed regulatory approach, consider whether or not you try and engage the goodwill of, of folks who have dogs with some kind of campaign in the park that um, sort of really tries to educate them on the value of uh, being very cognizant of, of our friends and neighbors who don't wanna have our dogs come run up, up to them. I think it's a very fair point. Um, I think Jess had a good idea and, and Rebecca about ours. Um, <clears throat> and so I think they're, uh, there are any number of trees, a fenced dog park somewhere that might, you know, be a controlled space for dogs to uh, play off leash. Those ideas are out there. And I think there's a lot of willing dog owners who, uh, you know, follow the current rules of having their dogs under control. 
um, who would be more than willing to engage in that topic, um, offer some give, you know, but try and maintain what is truly special about Hubbard Park to a lot of us. I'm out at dawn and dusk. I rarely see anyone when I walk my dog. Um, I do a little bit of a loop on the tower loop and the only people I ever see also have dogs. Um, I still leash mine every time I come across someone because um, he likes to run up to people and I, and I know that's not something people want, but I, I, when we're just two of us alone in the park at dawn, I think it, it, it would be okay to have him off. And I don't, I think this, this um, proposed rule would sort of be overly restrictive by uh, kind of taking too many things away uh, without actually solving the problem. Because at the end of the day, the people aren't gonna follow the rules are not gonna follow the new rule and we're back where we started. So uh, bottom line, appreciate the plan. Uh, more uh, verbose comments in the written versions that I'll hand out to the folks who are here. And I emailed to you earlier and I'd ask that you consider them and uh, willing to engage in the conversation. Thanks, appreciate the time. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Um, let's, I see Marin has her hand raised um, on digitally. So let's move to a Zoom space for a quick second before we go back in person, if that's okay. Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm like not quite, quite set up for Zoom here, but, um, and I can lower my hand there so it's not in my front of my face. I think everybody, thank you so much for having this. And I'm actually really grateful for all of the kind of heated conversation that's happened online and, and whatnot, because I was actually not totally aware of everything that has that the Parks Commission has been doing. And it afforded me the opportunity to go back and read through all of the the lovely planning and history. And it's it's really incredible work. So I'm really thankful for that and and to be able to join here and and for all your work and and the way you laid it all out in the beginning is is really great. And all of the points I you know would back up uh, everybody said so many really wonderful things so far that I would agree with. I just wanted to kind of circle back around to what the first person said and I was really taken in the beginning um, you read the mission statement of the Parks Commission, and in there, there was a line around community identity. And that really struck me because that's one of the things I've really been thinking about and what the first person was speaking to, which was the community that exists. And it is a really very active community, I think, is demonstrated to tonight in this meeting, um, where we're not people who necessarily socialize with with each other outside of this, although there is this party, you know, dog party that happens and there's a lot of friendliness, but there's a lot of people that, you know, in a kind of increasingly technological and isolated world where we're meeting like this online, um, you know, dogs running, uh, you know, greeting each other, sniffing at each other, um, really encourages people to have community in in engagement and to greet each other and talk about the weather or even just say have a nice day and the way that it the way dogs encourage the cultivation of community is foundational in the identity and i think montpelier does have a lot of identity as a kind of dog city and and i think a big part of that has to do with the way that we can move around in in Hubbard Park and see each other and greet each other in a way that dogs on leash just does not you know if I'm walking my dog on a leash um I'm walking my dog on a leash not able to pause to say hi or talk about the weather or just catch up on somebody that I I probably wouldn't see otherwise um but is always friendly and engaging um and that's not to dismiss other people's experiences of dogs but I think that part around community identity and what we want to kind of hold to and and what that fosters I think that really would be a loss for the city of Montpelier if that was kind of disenfranchised and and I agree with the statements around kind of it, it creates this slippery slope to other things um so I appreciate the opportunity to just kind of chime in there on that that point and all the work that all of you are putting in is just really wonderful and um I'll I'll send it back and stay tuned to everywhere that this goes so thank you Great, thanks, Marin. Let's go back in person. There's somebody in front of the camera. If you can, yep, that's I'm Pat, folks, and I also live on Cliff Street. 
And um, I moved here about 10 years ago with my dog. And at the time, my dog was two and a half. And I moved to um, help my daughter with my grandchildren. And uh, throughout the 10 years, because I live on Cliff Street, there's a loop that I can do going up at the end of the road and around. And then I have infinite possibilities after that. I can go to the tower. I can go down to either one of the shelters. I can go to the frog pond. Depend In the winter, I go less distance because it takes me twice as long to get there. But my dog and I have made a lot of dog friends and people friends since we've been here. And um, I also have gotten old since I've been here and so is my dog. So now we're in a position of needing more flat loops that we can do in the to keep doing our exercise and to keep meeting the people and running into the people in the park. And um, so I agree with a lot of the things that have been said today. I'm not opposed to times when dogs have to be on leash in the park and that everybody would know when those were. And I'm not opposed to there being some areas where dogs need to be on leash in the park. When I see people coming toward me in the park, I put my dog on leash. If I see children, I put my dog on leash. If I see another person who has a dog that's on leash, I put my dog on leash. And I think that could be added to the dog code of conduct and posted because then you're not gonna scare people because if they look nervous or if they ask you to leash your dog, you can just immediately do that. So I think there are a lot of options available and still keep um, some loops open that are relatively accessible to people that are older. I have a lot of older friends that walk their dogs in the park and it's the main exercise we get every day. So that's my two cents. Thank you. And thanks for all the work you guys are doing. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Um, let's see, am I missing any digital? I don't see any digital hands raised. Let's keep it in person. Up to me. It's you. Okay. Uh, I'm George Dash. I live on Sibley Avenue in Montpelier. Um, I sent comments to basically thank you so much for doing this work and and developing this compromise for the, uh, as I see it, the, uh, the basically shared use of the park. And uh, I like I like the uh, <laughs> the continuum that you showed about the options. Uh, because when I was thinking about what I wanted to say, I, uh, I had to think about one thing that doesn't seem to come out in this so much is that it's, it's either you're a dog person or you're not a dog person. And, and it's really a continuum. It's, 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 a, it's a spectrum of people. I mean, I would put myself in a category of people who I don't particularly like dogs, but I have a lot of friends who have dogs and we, I get along fine with dogs that know me and, and whatnot. But I'm, I'm, I have to say that I'm, I'm very frustrated. I, I, I think I haven't been to Hubbard Park in so long now because of all of the encounters I had with dogs that were not under control, um, even dogs on leashes, um, to a certain extent, where people come up and they assume, well, you, you're walking in a park, so you must like dogs. And, um, you know, I. I, I like dogs that I know. I like dogs that I know are under control, especially when I'm with my grandchildren, um, who I will throw my body down in front of a you know an oncoming vehicle for um, if it would help uh, to, to solve the problem. But I, I just I, I have a lot of problem with the number of times I've been in and around Montpelier and Hubbard Park before I stopped going there, where I had to had to um, essentially put myself between. Um, uh, the dog and my wife or or uh, my grandchildren and my kids actually a long time ago when they lived here um, and it it gets so it, it it I know that there are a lot of good people with dogs I mean and I'd say by and by and large the majority of people uh, on the bike path etc when we're walking they do uh, they leash up when they see somebody coming or they will uh, they will ask if it's okay if the dog is in contact with you. Um, but I think what has been presented is a really good compromise uh, for the use of uh, Hubbard Park, which is a it's, a it's phenomenal resource for the city of Montpelier. I've been here 
um, greater than better than 40 years. Um, and um, I just I appreciate the work that the commission has done. I'd like to see uh, a compromise like you've developed uh, for the use of, of Hubbard Park. And uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the trails that are um, that are proposed, uh, but I think that having that um, the ability to actually go there and not have to deal with the people who you know essentially chide you for not you know knowing how to deal with a dog because you've you stood between them and and your grandchildren is like a little too much for me to deal with. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks for your work. I appreciate it. Thanks, George. Um, thanks, George. Let's go um, back to Zoom again. And um, we've got Arthur Folsh. Hi, I'm Arthur Folsh. I'm also on Cliff Street. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the commission for uh, all of the work that has been done here, um, particularly, I think, in context of the expansion of the park and then with the parcel that was acquired. We have the opportunity to do so much more in Hubbard Park now in a much more in a much less compressed kind of space. And I think to me, that's really where the kind of approach that you all are trying to think through right now really makes sense, which is being able to set expectations for particular areas of the park so that people recreating in various different kinds of capacities can have sort of a sense of like what that experience might be like and looking through some of the comments that you included in the in the draft plan about people's concerns both about north branch and about hubbard park a lot of that is about you know being able to have expectations going in some of that is things like you know, knowing how to find your way. Some of that is about dogs. Some of it is about bikers. Some of it is about skiers. So I, I think in the vein of thinking through, you know, uh, trying to create a way in which we can have a better understanding of the kinds of activities that are happening in particular areas, trying to come up with policies around particular trails um, being, you know, restricted to dogs on leash makes sense given the feedback that you all have gotten. And certainly from my own personal experience, it also works with that really well. So I, I think just trying to think about, uh, for me, like when I think about the park, I think about those main centers of the park where cars are being parked, the, the, the tower trail and the um, what is being called the accessible trail. Um, those are high areas of activity and the kinds of expectations of being able to get out of cars and being able to navigate those, it makes sense to me that we would have some sort of common expectations about it. To other commenters' um, points, you know, maybe it might make sense to consider variations of those trails or something if you are to go forward with having um, an on-leash policy for those. But I, I also just want to you know, from, from my perspective, being able to control the kind of density of activity in those areas and then allow for, you know, uh, in, the, in the newly acquired areas to have um, uh, areas where dogs are able to be off leash. It, that seems to me to make a lot of sense to be able to accommodate those different kinds of uses. So again, I appreciate the thoughtfulness with which you're approaching this. And it really strikes me that the ability to create a sort of solid expectations for people coming so they know what kinds of activities happen where is really key to making whatever policy you move forward with, forward with a success. And I, I think I've heard that from everybody who's spoken, although we may not agree directly, I think we're all uh, actually pretty aligned on the fact that that sense of expectation is really important and the clarity of communication around it is really critical. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, let's go back. Is there somebody? I don't see somebody in person. So let's go um, to David. I see you have your hand raised. Uh, hi, David Miles here. I'm a long term uh, resident of Core Street. And just following up uh, on the last comment in terms of clarity, I'm wondering why, and I don't know if this is the right place for this question now directly to the commission, but why? the existing policy on no off-leash dogs on roads in the park is not part of the canine 
code of conduct. Um, and I guess for the conscientious dog owners who know that code of conduct and also the city policy, why there's such a huge percentage of dogs currently on park roads that are unleashed. Uh, and again, to follow up on the last comment, are the times that I've been uh, bitten or charged or attacked in the park have typically been uh, on park roads, not on park trails, uh, and often uh, in the area that was referred to as the dog park, but between there and the ranger station, where there's a lot of activity, there's not great sight lines, and there's often a gaggle or frenzy of dogs uh, coming or going there. So I'm, I'm just wondering why it's not part of the uh, canine code of conduct. Could it be put on there? Could there be signage to make people more aware of that fact? Um, I think that might go a long way in terms of clarity around existing policy. And if we're going to try to build solid policy upon what we've already got, maybe making that clearer from the get-go would be helpful. Thanks, David. Um, not to ignore your question, but I'm not sure. We'd have to do a, a, a historical research project simply on the canine code of contact, I think, to answer the question around why it's not in there or, or is in there. Um, but I think is a great, you know, idea that we'll add to the list here of, of possibilities of solutions. So thank you for sharing that. Sure thing. Well, we're a little after seven o'clock here, and I'm sure there are other people who would love to continue the conversation and, and have more to share tonight. I think um, just to move things along here, I do want to um, close the, just for tonight the, the the public conversation here. I think this is clearly something that does need to, to continue and have more conversation around it. Um, but I want to turn to commissioners and just hear some of your thoughts and ideas and um, also, you know, um, paths forward and next steps that you're all seeing here. Um, before commissioners speak, I see Donna's hand and she probably has like a point of order or something. <laughs> You're muted. Oh, we can't hear you. Uh, yeah. Thank you for seeing me. I had another meeting going on um, when you changed your date, but I really appreciate all the comments. There's just one correction I want to make, and it is about the ballot item that happened at the special meeting in June 2017. It was a question, should dogs be leashed in Hubbard Park? And it was just a non-binding and opinion poll. We wanted to get a sense. And it was 678, yes. 600, no, I'm sorry, 678, no, 637, yes, it was 41 votes difference. So we felt the community was, you know, a, a mix. And hence, anything you can do that helps that mix, I think is great. And it wasn't intended to be binding. We just wanted to get a, a pause on where the community was at large and trying to make the resource work for people. And I really applaud your approach and everyone's participation and input. It's all helpful. Thank you. Great, thanks, Donna. Um, all right, commissioners, I'm gonna turn to you all um, for um, I think ideas and next steps or approaches for kind of what maybe makes sense to include in our draft going forward, kind of, you know, what, what kind of next steps do we need and want to see here? And I'll remind everyone that the draft includes like put a dogway station at Wyndham Drive. I haven't had no one suggest that that's a bad idea. So that could maybe stay in the management plan. <laughs> I just, there may, so maybe there are elements to keep, elements to rephrase or postpone or um, to continue the conversation. So you're speaking specifically about dog related issues, Kasha? Yes, specifically to the dog related issues. And then we will, Put a bow on the dog conversation for this evening and then look to the rest of the management plan for other topics of management plan. Okay, I'll jump in here. Um, I, yeah, I just want to say thank you for everybody who came, however you got here for um, this specific meeting and this topic. I think the comments we heard tonight fall directly in line with what we've been hearing 
throughout this outreach process, um, which has been going on for a year. I understand, you know, um, the word is getting out in different communities at different times, and we're, you know, we're in the we're in the middle of it right now. There's no, this is a draft proposal by all means, um, but that, you know, 50-50 or nearly 50-50 split that Donna referred to in 2017, it and that, you know, and that vote was for leashing in theoretically the entire park. It does feel like that rang true here tonight, um, just in those comments. I wanted to point that out. Um, I, I appreciate what Arthur's comment was about just the expectations. I think the reason, part of the reason that, you know, this zone of Hubbard Park is so contentious is because it is so accessible and so highly used and, and such a gem. You know, you it's one of the only, it's the only part where you can really just drive in, get out of your car, be on a trail, um, do do your walk, um, know what to expect in terms of the trail, have you know an accessible walk, and the the next action item after the proposed you know modifying of dog policies is to identify two miles of interconnected boulevard trail that would be maintained at the same standards of the tower and interpretive trail. Sign that as an accessible off leash dog walking because. To me, that is a big part of this balance where there's people who aren't a part of this conversation or aren't a part of the Hubbard Park community because of our current policies. And we wanna bring those people in. And the last thing we wanna do is remove community that is existing right now, um, that is bring people together through off-leash dog walking. And we know that there's literally accessible issues on both sides. People can't walk their dogs with a leash because of accessibility reasons. People, you know, can't walk around dogs off leash. So we need to, I think, as a community, fit those people into the same Hubbard Park zone. And I, I do like right now where the plan is at in terms of that balance. I'm definitely open to thinking about um, interpreting some temporal language here you know I think that does complicate things but I do know you know in a lot of other parks where that has been successful um so I'd you know I'd be interested in continuing that conversation but I think we're really close to something that um I think strikes the balance that we're we're trying to get out here I feel like we've um just like Lincoln just said um we've heard so much on both sides um and there's been such a strong response that i don't really see a problem with just making this turning this into like explore further options in terms of dog leashing and dogs off leash um and if there it does seem like there's a lot of kind of um interest in volunteering and getting involved with it so if we can like harness some of this energy to do an actual study of how people are using the park and how people want to use the park like reaching out not just to the people who are using the park but also those who have responded to the surveys and said they're not visiting the park because of dogs um being able to understand those numbers a little better in order to make a decision about how to move forward might make sense Um, Emily, does that sound like, um, you know, so that we can move forward with the rest of the park plan without having this, you know, has to list having this delay implementation of the rest of the park plan? Maybe a little bit. Okay. okay yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I, I had to noodle on that. I'm not opposed to that, but I don't want this to drag on for months and months and months either. Mm -hmm. um and i i am totally open to the idea of of <sighs> if it's some kind of a committee uh some kind of a maybe some kind of a survey uh uh engaging many of the of the stakeholders in this to draft something um i, I am I, I am open to that idea um you know we've heard so much very passionately about um the community um um that people have um and you know i hope people realize 
and I, I speak for myself, and I think I can speak for some of the other commissioners, all the other commissioners, you know, there's no intention to harm or damage those communities and the wonderful friends and relationships that people have. We are trying to, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase Arthur's words a little bit too, um, totally paraphrasing Arthur's words, um, you know, make sure that others have the chance for that kind of uh, a community as well. And what we've clearly heard is there's a fair number of people who don't have that. Um, it's not a minority, a small minority, um, or um, you know, some small fraction of it. There are people who are clearly not going to the park anymore. Um, and you know, the idea of the I am not, I am not wedded to it has to be the Tower Trail or nothing else. Um, but there's a reason that we that we focused on the Tower Trail. Yes, it is the most popular trail in the park, probably, um, for dog walkers and non-dog walkers. Um, and, and I think our, our thinking at the time was it needs to be more inclusive. And I, I, so I think that's how we zeroed in on it. I don't want to speak for everybody else on that one, um, but I think that's how we zeroed in on that. And we recognize, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and you know measure the actual square footage that we're affecting and say, oh, it's only a tough. We know that it's the trail. We get that. We get that, um, but I it was intentional why why we came around to that one. So, um, so you know I think for me, I am speaking for myself in this one. Um, you know if we have a committee or something, I, I I welcome that. I think there's a lot of people tonight who have offered uh, to help with that. I appreciate that. Um, but the I but but starting with there's no problem and we don't have to do anything is fine the way it is. That's that's a non-starter for me. Um, I have a lot of a lot of voices and a lot of people I've heard from who are very supportive of of the attempt of what we're doing. Um, some people supporting exactly those two trails, other people saying it doesn't have to be those. It could be other areas, but I really appreciate the intent of of, as Arthur said, managing expectations uh, that when we go there, there will be places where I don't have to worry about that. That's my thinking and where I would like to start from. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Andrew. Um, Stephanie. Sure. Um, yes, thank you everyone for all of your public comments tonight, um, past meetings and that we've received via email. There's clearly a very passionate and responsible dog owning community that um, uses Hubbard Park very frequently. Um, and I'm, I mean, I don't see all of you all the time, but I am a dog walker in my, Hubbard Park um, off leash. And well, I haven't had any, you know, egregious issues with other people or other dogs. I've had some, you know, unsavory experiences that would not have happened if dogs were truly under voice control. So while, you know, we all hope that our dog will listen, there it's not always happening. So there really isn't a safe space right now for people to go in Hubbard Park that don't trust dogs or don't like dogs or just don't want a dog to come up to them because a lot of dogs are currently not under voice control in Hubbard Park. Um, so our intention, well, at least one of my intentions with choosing this trail for um, uh, on-leash dog walking was because it's accessible. It would be I know, a trail with that people with young children could easily use or people that are older could easily use. And those are the people that we have heard from in you know, person to person feedback and in surveys that they don't feel comfortable coming to the park, people with young children and people that are older. Um, so that is the intention. And I am open to, I think a temporal limit could make sense, um, like you know, on leash only after 9 a.m. I think that's reasonable. So people can get their early morning walks with dogs. I'd be willing to explore that. Uh, with the other commissioners. Um, I am in favor of moving this along and including it as part of the plan um, rather than delaying it. Um, you know, we've we've gotten a lot, I mean, a decent amount of public feedback. We've done two surveys, we've done all the field walks. Every field walk that I did, I asked people point blank, how would you feel if we um, started leashing dogs in some of Hubbard Park? You know, whether it's a zone, whether it's a trail, what do you feel about that? And I was shocked that no one was like, oh, no, that's a terrible idea. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, that could make sense. I could see that working. Um, this was both at the field visits um, and that are like open house that we had. So 
I do think there is general support for this outside of these of you know the daily dog walker community. Um, so I do think we need some sort of action, and I do think we're really close here. But I would be um, interested in looking into a temporal adjustment to our current language. I have to Google temporal now. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm not putting that in the notes, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I have heard, let's see, we have um, suggestion to kind of rephrase to um, explore or this kind of like continue exploring with the caveat I heard from Andrew of if we do that, let's make sure that doesn't take months and months and months. Like, let's just do that and be done with it and make a decision. Um, Stephanie, I think I heard from you. What if we could maybe make a few tweaks now over the next couple of weeks here and come to a decision? Um, and um, I, um, did I, did I capture that? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think my, you know, if this is, I think the reason this, this even came up to us as a commission, we were not sitting around thinking like dogs and Hubbard, what could we do about this? Or like, let's wade into Montpelier's third rail issue and see how we like it. Like, I don't think that what happened was that we actually were hearing from that silent group and the silent people saying, I, I don't come to the park or I used to come to the park and I don't anymore. And I think that was happening because a lot of the engagement we've been doing has been working. And what I found even you know, with my neighbors, I was talking to them the other day because they had a kid, they have a kid, he's in, you know, second, third grade now, but a few years ago, they had said, oh, we don't go, I know you're on the Parks Commission, we don't go to the park, we don't go to Hubbard because my kid's afraid to, of dogs, we can't go to the park. And so I just let them know, hey, this is an issue coming up, like just, if you're curious, this is what's happening. And they said, you know, I... Um, you know, it's, I, I wish we could have gone there when a kid, when my kid was young and, and we didn't get to go there, but I also don't want to email you all as park commissioners. I don't want to show up to a public meeting. I don't want my name and my face associated with that because I know that this is such a polarizing issue, you know? So I think that's just to say that that's just one of, I think, many conversations that we've all had. And I think Stephanie you brought up those walks that we had in the park last spring, which I just thought were such a wonderful experience because we were connecting face to face with people and one on one conversation that was just really rich and, and productive. And it was also in those some of those one on one conversations where people said, you know what, I would come here more I don't use this part of the park because of, of dogs so that's, you know, that's just to say that like I think there's this. Um, what we hear from often are the people who are walking their dog in the park and saying, you know, it's great. I'm here. All the people I hear see in the park have dogs. They're all off leash and everyone I see is really loving it. And what I want to be sure, no matter what Pat, whether we're making a decision in the next couple of weeks here or like over the next few months, say, I want to make sure that that those silent, that silent voices are heard, whether they're a majority or minority it doesn't matter. I think it's important that we make space for them to be heard. And it's going to be the hardest group of people to hear from. Um, and I just want to make sure that we're very intentional about including those people in the, in, in whatever solutions we're coming up with. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the strengths we have right now is that because this issue has surfaced people, we've gotten so many emails from both sides. So we have all these email addresses that we can now contact people and say, hey, would you like to participate in a focus group on this or mm -hmm. join a committee that's gonna do a study or I don't know, it's a, it's a 
it could be an opportunity to talk about solutions in new ways that hasn't been tried before because there hasn't been an an effort to like really look like study how people are using the park or how people want to use the park it's just been that one vote yeah and you know one the potential partner that we've listed here you know includes the community volunteers and i think the you know the folks who have been emailing us the folks who have been volunteering already to join on you know some sort of focus group i think we absolutely need these people none of, there are no park police you know this isn't new york city we're not going to have somebody out there um you know handing out tickets whatever whatever is happening now and whatever is you know potentially going to be changed is is up to the community really this is you know we we can use the strongest language we want but you know i'm not going to stand out there and uh you know at spend my saturday and sundays asking people to put dogs on leashes nobody you know that's not what we're doing here in montpelier um so i don't you know i would be in favor of moving forward with the language we have you know in, and continuing to discuss you know possible additions from what we've heard tonight but i definitely want to add including um you know even even if we go forward with this as is right now like i would want to be working with the people that we've been hearing from dog dog owners and non-dog owners about how can we implement this plan how can we actually do these action items and you know where does the sign make the most sense or you know what are we going to do at this intersection the people who are out there every day um, on both sides of the dog issue, you know, I would want to see that kind of come together and, and work on just, you know, implementing these actions, um, I think is going to be totally necessary. So I think that should be something we're thinking of. And I heard in a lot of the comments in the recent weeks, which is, you know, how it's, what about the challenges that this is, that this is going to surface, you know, if we do go through with this. So I think that's something we need to be thinking about is getting together a group one way or another, you know, if it's to explore this option or if it's to implement this option and assess, I think we do need to be moving that direction of building a, building a focus team. Donna, did you have some institutional history to add that we missed? Well, I, I, oh, thank you. You're so great. Um, it was, Emily, and that's because I just wanted you to know that the commission spent over two years developing the co that then it ended up being the canine conduct code yeah. and hearings and public and it was so divisive it, it was really uncomfortable but they but they held in and they came out with that canine code of conduct and that was a compromise so i think again and again as we all mature with diversity and equity equitable use of resources that we're at another level in our community so it's really great that you're at this place to go another step in that direction. Uh, so, but you are building on a base that's happened before. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. All of those commissioners are smart enough to not be on the commission now. <laughs> <laughs> no, city council members got more emails about the dog. <laughs> that we had the audacity to put that on the ballot. It was really, people were very upset. Uh, and it's too bad because dogs and parking get the more emails and we wish people would be as concerned about some other issues too. But anyway, so you don't have an easy task. You don't have an easy task. Thank well, you. Well, thanks, Donna. Um, I am thinking, you know, we do have a management plan here. If we were to like delete everything about dogs, I think our management plan would be lacking and have a gap and a hole in it. And so there's, this seems like there's some needs to be something in there. So I'm thinking that maybe it would make sense to kind of read through what's in there now and think about like what is totally fine, like um, perhaps the dog bag station at Wyndham Drive, which is the first bullet, <laughs> <laughs> I think we could leave in the plan. Okay. And is then, there, oh, sorry, Kasha. Yeah. Is there uh, uh, going to be a new, there are going to be some new dog stations at in North Branch? as well, right? I don't, I'm not seeing those here. Um, Lincoln, there were, I would say for Hubbard, there were originally proposed um, more like at seven fireplaces in talking with Alec and Kara on staff. It was clear that it would be challenging to maintain those dog waste stations. 
um, by having to like have vehicle access and year round and, and whatnot. And so that's where the Wyndham drive one seemed like it would have the best year round vehicle access. Um, and the others were removed from Hubbard. Okay. But maybe Lincoln can speak to North branch. Yeah. I, last I remember we had one or two at major entrances I have to find where it's been moved because we did do the big <laughs> rearrange rearrangement so um you know I can I can work on that and dig that up and and include that language in this dog policy if it's still in this version of the draft it might we, it's, only at Drive. it's only at Wyndham Drive right now thanks Alex so um no and other there, dog way stations are being proposed. there is a dog way station at the rec fields um, and then there's not one coming from North Branch Nature Center. I think the only location that's like vehicle accessible would potentially be like the Cumming Street neighborhood. So um, maybe we could follow up and ask Alec and Kara what they think about just the logistics of maintaining that. But maybe um, I'll just pin that as a possibility to look into more. Um, the next piece here is the um, stone tower and interpretive trail. Let's just hold that for one second. Um, the dogs to be leashed on roads open to motor vehicle traffic is in keeping with the city ordinances. It seems like that makes sense to keep. It's not any change. It's simply, you know, by surfacing it here, it means that it would be more prominent for us to put it on signs and in the canine code of conduct and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing heads nod. Does that make sense okay should we um, also add like add a specific note that like and add it to the canine code of conduct existing canine mm -hmm. code of conduct yeah well actually so i don't know much i mean about the origin of the canine code of conduct except from what we've been talking about but is that meant to be etiquette suggestions things that are not regulations and rules additional uh, responsibilities for dog owners or, you know, best practices. And if it's so, then do we need to mix what is a city ordinance in with those, that list? Does that make sense there? I think it's meant to be guidance. I mean, Alec, you might be able to speak to this more, but my impression from kind of the, the literate, this, what we have on our website and stuff, it seems like it's guidance and it's also a place that dog owners go to know what to do when they're in the park. So like having that in there, like I'm a dog owner and didn't actually know about the city ordinance until this conversation began. So like a few weeks ago, whenever that was. So um, I, I never looked it up and just like didn't know. So I feel like in the interest of like spreading awareness of it, it might make sense to put it in there. And I mean, it may be like some of our other actions in here. It's like, you know, at community and additional communications, including canine code of, con you know, there could be posts on mm. social media or whatever, you know, there could be other aspects to that, especially if it's perceived as a new thing, simply because no one has told people that you're supposed to have your dog on a leash. Right. On their right. um, Stephanie, you were going to say something. Yeah, just that I agree with Emily that I think it makes sense to have everything dog related in one place. Um, so, I mean, we can just refer people to the city ordinances um, that and like quote it um, in the canine code of conduct rather yeah. than saying that it's part of the canine code of conduct necessarily. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I agree. And the next bullet here is requiring dogs to be leashed at parking areas marked at on maps with P and at shelters. Uh, would it be too in the weeds to say and at shelters when they're in use? I mean, I don't see why I should be leashing my dog when I'm walking past an empty shelter. That seems reasonable. Um, can I just chime in with a staff perspective on that, um, which is that I think in terms of thinking about how we would enforce some, not enforce, but clearly set the expectations, like we would need to create some sort of signage when you were approaching a shelter that told people to put their dog on a leash. And I don't think 
you can really it wouldn't be in a place where you could like necessarily see the shelter in a lot of places before you get there and often people's dogs are running in front of them so yeah uh, i think it would make it it would make the expectations pretty fuzzy if we went with when in use um, is my my perspective Okay, um, shelters and parking areas. It seems to me that we haven't gotten that much, there hasn't been much um, feedback on this one. I don't know if that's because it's fairly new, um, but maybe people are okay with it. I think the most feedback that um, we heard or, the, you know, via emails and, and whatnot was around the dog park and concern that if my dog has to be at leash in the parking area, that I wouldn't be able to have my dog run all around in that doggy play area, which I think is solved by the fence kind of solution. Mm -hmm. Um, and it did sound one of the people who spoke tonight, maybe Jessa, I think, um, said, you know, if, you know, maybe it would make sense if dogs are active to have an expectation that your dog be on a leash until leaving the parking area. Um, I don't, and I might have gotten the person wrong, but um, it, see, that, it seems kind of like that would make sense. And I think would maybe cut down on one of the other people's folks said, you know, when they've had poor interactions with dogs, it's been on the roads and essentially like the, between those major parking areas um, that could maybe cut. I mean, I think one of the pieces that we're trying to do here, I, I, you know, I heard from people tonight, like this is a slippery slope, like what more is going to be closed to dogs. And I think in fact, what we're trying to do is like reduce the conflict so that we can continue to have more like places open for dogs off leash. And it seems like the parking areas our, our space to like make progress in reducing like the human dog conflict um, that wouldn't significantly impact some of the other concerns we were hearing of community and people in use and all of that. I agree. And it, it also, I mean, it's kind of a safety issue with cars. Uh, hmm. Okay. Um, Andrew, were you going to say something? You looked like you were going to say something. <clears throat> Trying not to cough. <clears throat> um, I wonder if we could um, um, take a minute and I want to understand what we're doing moving forward. Um, and we're not, I, we're not voting on anything tonight. And we said at the outset that we're not making any decisions yeah. tonight feels to me a little bit like we're making some decisions <laughs> and I want to make sure people in the audience understand that we're not voting on anything and and so are we um and and you're right Kasha I don't you know I two things neither am I prepared to make any decisions tonight at the same you know I want to take our time at the same point in time I you know I said earlier I don't want to let this drag on forever and ever so I'm trying to reconcile you know are we uh you know if we if we change some language to say I forget Emily may have said, you know, we're going to consider options rather than this is what we are going to do. You know, I don't want to let that mean, well, now we have all the breathing room in the world to let nothing happen for a long time. Um, so, you know, do you think, do, do other people think it might, you know, we don't have to uh, cross every I and dot every T, but I want to talk about how, what are we going to do? Are we going to set up um, a committee, you know, made up of mm -hmm. stakeholders and, uh, you know, how, 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 and, and how can we communicate with people from tonight moving forward? We do have a lot of emails, um, but, you know, we've heard that people didn't know this is happening and what's the best way. Uh, and it's got to be quick and efficient. I don't want, you know, you know, I, I don't want to let things drag on. We can talk about a survey in this stakeholder group, but surveys take time. And um, I don't know, I just have a lot of questions obviously bouncing around in my head how we're gonna how we're gonna yeah. move forward tonight. No, I think that's uh, that's helpful. I think what's important, maybe just that we all know as commissioners, but to share with the public, we have a five person quorum. We, we are five people on the commission and we have a three person quorum. 
So that means that if there's ever a time when three of us are talking to each other and we have not warned a public meeting, it is illegal. So yeah, so, I, yeah, thank you for pointing so, that out. I was going to say, it sounds like we don't know what we're talking about. And just because we haven't been able to have these conversations. And so I just want to say that because this is the only space yeah. we can talk to each other. It's not yeah. like we can like listen to you all tonight and then right. end the meeting and then yeah. just like run into each other around town. And, yeah. you know, we can talk to each other one-on-one, -on -one, but can't actually legally talk to each other together thank <laughs> so, you for making that point yeah um, this is the only space that we can have these like details of like you know what should be in or out or how do we phrase this <laughs> so, right um so uh what i'm thinking so there's um this is this is what i'm thinking we well i skipped over the like primary bullet which is like the um two the the leashes on two trails mm -hmm. there's one more secondary bullet here which is like the fenced doggy area piece it, that came from and it's not like a fence all the way around but it's simply kind of like a single edge barrier between the parking and that field space it came from you know collectively from the public I think multiple people suggested it um does that make sense to include essentially like no matter what happens of any kind of focus group if that's the path we want to go forward does that make sense to include I think we heard some support for that. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, I think it makes sense. You know, I think it we would that site, we would think of it. I mean, it could definitely feel more like a dog park, even with one fence. Um, and that's something just to consider in, in the the maintenance of that area or like the resource hardening or other things that we might come along with the fence or what that signals to people um, when they see, you know, a fence fenced in area with dogs, even though there's only one fence, just thinking about it from a zoomed out perspective. I like the idea. And I think there's like, that's one with, there could be repercussions that we could maybe try to foresee and plan for because people are going to say, yeah, right on dog park, you know? So um, maybe, maybe uh, adding some sub bullets there of what else is going to be done for maintenance in that area. And I think it would have to have like a gate wide enough for a car that could like wheel aside or open aside because that area is used for like overflow parking when there are events and things like that. So um, I think that would be a useful consideration. Um, Can the, I just, yes, please. I was just going to say, I don't know if we need to get that granular in okay. this plan though. I mean, yes. I think it's enough to say we, we intend to build a fence. We'll see like what that actually looks like and whether you know how it materializes but yeah and so um the bullet that we skipped over was requiring dogs to be leashed on the stone tower trail and the interpretive trail so i think for that bullet in particular i'm just going to share like a continuum i can of like possibilities we could keep that in the plan for now and like keep thinking about it we could um, put that in or some version temporarily and say like, until we actually make a decision, let's have leashes on. And, and, and I guess no decision has ever really been actively made around the interpretive trail because it's like, it's a new trail. So it's not like a parks commission ever said, let's have leashes or not leashes. It just kind of accidentally became leash zone. Um, we could have a, um, focus group to, um, to think through, like, with some parameters of let's do this over the next few months. Let's make sure that there's survey that there's X, Y, and Z type components. Let's do it by the state, have people reporting back to the commission. Um, and I may be missing some things. Um, I think that, um, you know, one of the tough things about this issue, and then Kasha, I think you refer to them as like the, the silent community that we're not hearing from, the people yeah. that aren't coming to the park because of dog-related incidences. Um, and I definitely agree with a lot of the comments we've received that basically say, how do you know this will make any difference? And we, we don't. So maybe one way to propose this is as a pilot study that we do this for 
six months and then do another public outreach sort of you know, situation where we figure out, has this led to more people coming to the park? I mean, it might need to be a little bit longer than six months because we need to get the word out that these are now areas that dogs are required to be on leash. Um, give people, you know, a chance to change their daily routine to include going to the park. Um, so maybe we, maybe it's more of a temporary um, proposal, pilot study sort of thing than something that we're saying, yep, this is, this is how it's going to be going forward forever. Interesting idea. I definitely like where Stephanie is heading with this. Like, I think we know something needs to be done. I think the question that we're up against is what needs to be done. Um, so that, that kind of resonates with me. Some, some form of that. Um, I also, you know, you know, I want to go back to something I said about like, okay, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to be the one out there, you know, putting leashes on dog or something, but that is in our plan is, you know, in this same goal is working with city services, local organizations to do walkthroughs or bike throughs um, to monitoring activities, engaging with visitors, address, addressing issues. So I think, you know, if there's a trial period or not, I think that focus group should include this outreach, you know, campaign to the people, the boots on the ground, the people who are there, maybe visiting Montpelier on a Saturday or Sunday and just like actually seeing how things play out. And I, I feel like if, you know, that we have such a strong community around the dogs that I feel like there would be a lot of people, again, on both sides of the issue that would probably be willing to, you know, maybe do a day a month or something like that, where they're going and observing at very least. And then, you know, other people aren't comfortable with engaging, but collecting that information um, could be valuable. But I, I, I think, I think it would be useful if there was an action to be um, responding to versus like kind of continuing sort of the no action, but gathering data, which I, which I feel I feel like we have a lot of information in that category. There definitely could be more, there could be more opportunities. I understand there's, you know, there are shortcomings in terms of like getting out to everybody um, equally or getting word out to everybody equally. Like that's a learning process. It's, it's challenging. I think we've done an excellent job um, and we can never do enough. So yeah, if I, I would, I would be, more in favor of moving forward with something and then monitoring it with a focus group and reworking language is saying, you know, we, we will, we are going to be able to adapt this to actually meet the needs. We're not saying we know the, the solution because we haven't, you know, there hasn't been a, anything but what we currently have, which is no leashes anywhere. I think this has potential. I'm also thinking about, um, the there was somebody who recently wrote an email suggesting that we request people leash their dogs on those trails not like tell them to but request it and we could also like we could suggest you know it, it, like share the reasoning and suggest like if you see somebody coming please leash your or yeah i don't know suggest <laughs> might be please or we suggest that you um lease your dog or something like that and and have that either be part of the pilot study or um just kind of in place when the focus group is doing their study to see how many people are actually following it or how many people feel like they should follow it or if they're if they're stopping the people stopping people and talking to them while they're visiting the park they can ask them you know how do you feel about this new suggestion um, do you feel like it's reasonable or does it make you feel like you're being told what to do or, um, that I, well, um, Andrew, you look like you want to say, yeah, something. I think these are all things that a stakeholder group should be wrangling with Yeah, and that, that exact question. And, um, <clears throat> you know, right away I thought, Oh, a pilot study, but then I thought, well, yeah, but you know, these are these are rules, by the way, not law, <laughs> what we're working on here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we can change overnight. I mean, we can, <laughs> you know, we, we we can change them at, at our whim and at any time if something's not working. And we're not gonna do that, 
Um, but I think that, you know, ha having a, having a, a stakeholder group um, that we could come up with these plans come up with these ideas and test them out, if that's what we want to call it, um, it, you know, sounds like a, sounds like a way to go. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't go down the road of my personal experiences in the park and stuff and, and I won't bother, but I, you know, um, I, I, I will take it face value that we need to, you know, I, well, I'm in the park a lot. And so I, <laughs> I am not with a dog on, uh, with a dog. So, you know, I guess I'm not part of that community, uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not in the park and don't experience a lot of what happened. So, um, you know, I, I was going to say, I do need to get in the park more. Actually, I think I'm in the park a lot. And so I, I am, I do have my own experiences and what I see and what I feel um, when I'm there. Um, but let's, let's take it at face value that we, that we need to, we need to include, you know, a broader spectrum of stakeholders in this. And um, so, I, you know, I don't know how others feel, but if we can, we don't have to, again, we don't have to decide tonight exactly what the makeup of this will look like or, 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 or a timeline. Um, I just want to let it get away from us. So um, how about this? It seems like um, there, I'm hearing a lot of like focus group or here's how it could work or whatever that I don't think we can figure out tonight. Yeah. Um, We're well, hearing about, a lot from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, how, how about we like two, uh, two people, um, I'm, it's not going to meet me. I'm going to look for volunteers in the commission um, to kind of like chart out some parameters. Like this is, this is like the kind of survey, or this is the kind of outreach, or this is what this could like potentially look at, like, or how, you know, this is how we get people involved in the focus group and figure this out and a timeline and come back. We meet again in two weeks on the 21st and say like, how about this for an approach to a focus group and then go from there. Does that seem sensible? Are you asking two commissioners or to anybody? I'm asking two commissioners. And then two commissioners could like, you know, reach out to other people or whatever. But I think a commissioner should bring forward, like, here's yeah. what I think would. And it's not solving the problems. It's not putting right, forward. Right, people, right, right. Yeah. But is like, here's how this, the process of this, how, you know, in the timeline for this is how this would potentially work. I'll, I'll volunteer for that. I unfortunately can't because I'm missing the next meeting and work travel. Um, but so does, would this mean that we're removing the bullet about well, leashes? Yeah. So then I think the next question is what do we want while, you know, that focus group isn't going to, we might de decide to like, yes, have a focus group. We're not going to have the focus group meet and conduct study and make recommendations like in two weeks. So, yeah. um, I think then the question is, what do we want the kind of interim kind of status quo or not status quo, but like, what do we want the interim condition to be? And so between now and when the focus group completes its work, whatever that is, then the question is like, should it be off leash everywhere or keep these bullets in or, um, you know, some, you know, like Stephanie, you were saying like, this is a temporary trial or something. Yeah, I mean, you know? I think it's a lot easier to study change than it is to study the status quo and what could happen. So I'm in favor of making a change and then the focus group figuring out whether it's actually effective. I, I agree with Stephanie. I, I would be in favor of adding the focus group to this, to the current plan, the creation of a focus group. And just to clarify is what you're asking, Kasha, is that in the next two weeks, you know, a couple of us are to pretty much get the language down or the idea together or the focus group together, because those are two very different things. No, yeah. And I think it would be, this would not be part of the management plan. So the management plan would not say focus group of 17 people with five meetings and you know like we don't need to say that but I am hoping that two commissioners could just put their heads together draw on other people if you know and say like hey here's an idea for how focus groups could work who could be involved how we get the right people involved involved and the right voices heard and all of that here we think we can 
you know, have these steps to be ready to present a proposal essentially back to the commission by two months from now or three months from now or whatever that time frame looks like. Um, Andrew, you signed up for that, I think. Emily, uh, well, I don't, <laughs> you're very good at this. I'd you're be so I, good at this. I'd be willing to like proofread it or- That's a yes, no, that's done. a yes. <laughs> I, I will. Not, I'm so immersed in the management plan. I cannot like come That's over here right now. <laughs> well, um, Lincoln, what Lincoln? Yeah, Lincoln. Yeah. So, all um, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I am really happy to play my role on the commission and I, I work best if we have time before the deadline. So, it, you know, if I'm going to be a part of uh, whatever, you know, the, you know, getting together an idea for focus group, I'd love to know what I can do for that sooner rather than later so if um you know if i'm working if andrew if you and i are going to spearhead or something let's just connect you know yeah. this week and let's figure out what each of us can do um and i i yeah th thank you emily for saying like you're you're up for proofreading or something i don't think you need to be lifting anymore but uh, yeah you might be the best okay. commission so i think we should use everybody but i'm happy to connect with you andrew uh, yeah i'd love to know what i can start doing, you know, okay. later. Okay, so let's, we, like we said at the outset, we are not making decisions tonight. We're not voting on anything. We just have discussed and we have kind of a path forward. I think we can also sit with some of the conversation we had tonight and revisit in a couple of weeks and fine tune. I think in the meantime, with some of this conversation, um, we can, um, those of us who have been kind of like in the minutia of the wording and things like that, we can jump in and, you know, craft some language to bring an updated version for our next meeting. Um, all right. Is everybody, are we feeling good on this topic? Yeah. We're like yeah. 45, maybe we're an hour past what I thought we could do. I, I did we're find solve the entire Montpelier dog issue. <laughs> Before we close the door on the dog issue, there are two way stations there, Alec, in the Gulf Wars uh, C. And if, if we want to take them out, that's fine. But I did find them. Okay, let's put a pin in that to connect okay. with goal four C. Uh, objective C, it's snuck okay. in there. It's pet, yeah, make sure it's, pet waste. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a cat litter. Um, okay, so yeah, just put a pin. I just, I just wanted to get that on the record so we didn't forget. But yeah, okay, we're going to look at that. Okay. Excellent. I am going to move us along to the remainder of the management plan. We are an hour behind um, how um, we had a three or four hour meeting <laughs> that was memorable. So a couple of months ago, I don't want to do that again. If people are going to hop off, if you could please, if you haven't already, drop your name into the chat so that we can know who you were and that you were here. That or, be... you know, or email Alec at the, or something just so we have your contact information, please. Yeah. That would be very helpful. Um, so please do that as you're taking off. Um, I think we all totally approve of calling it a night if you need to. So don't don't be afraid if you need to leave. Um, let's turn to the remainder of the management plan and the action table and all the other things that are in the management plan um, and spend some time. Wait, um, there's other stuff in the management plan? There's other stuff in <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think it was especially, I guess I have closing and next steps as another space here, but I think it would be helpful to have in mind, like, what else do we need to do? We've, you know, had a lot of these discussions. Um, where are we? Um, any topics that you all would like to bring up as commissioners? Uh, yeah, there was something. No, I forget what it was. Um. Oh, well, uh, you know, we, we've discussed the um, the idea of, of no commercial logging, and then somebody suggested what about selective logging with horses, which I thought was interesting. But, um, uh, and I think at one point we had talked about, you know, none of us are foresters. I'm certainly not a forester, you know, getting the opinion of an actual forester on what the best thing to do is some of those trees. And I just wonder if there's any appetite for for that or leave it as it is. 
Well, um, two things. Um, the current draft does not include no commercial logging language. Maybe I should pull it up and look at it. Okay. Well, it's, it, you know, it's hard to remember what's in which thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did get, and I did, when I got that person's email today, I was like, oh, shoot, is that in there? And it's right. You know, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and that was per Alex request, especially, I think. Um, and then there is also in there um, to bring in an ecologist to make additional recommendations. Okay, okay. With, I think it spe says specific attention to like the plantation, some of the areas that like Erica had mentioned. Um, and then as to whether that, you know, whatever their recommendations, if it's like horse logging or whatever, like I feel like that okay. we don't need to prescribe. Yeah, got it. Okay. Uh, there was something else now. I can't remember what. Mm. 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 One person um, had emailed us or maybe a couple people um, with, um, they must have read the whole plan because otherwise, how can you see this? Is the, <laughs> line, or is the language around Mr. Hubbard's like deed and will saying that um, it's to protect the wilderness qualities and the wilderness character of, of I forget the wording. Um, and they were saying that, um, you know, the idea of the boulevard paths and further developing those places would be a shame. And I think, you know, just to clarify on that, like, I think the reason the places like Seven Fireplaces and the Tower Trail, like the places that are mentioned specifically as boulevard trails, I think are in there because they're essentially already developed and already the easiest trails. So I think the actions in there would be putting benches more frequently along them that I know, um, you know, people with you know, various mobility issues that like, if there's not a bench every quarter mile or so, like they can't, they have to stop to rest and they can't walk. So I think that's just to like surface what the idea what there is. Um, and their email make me, made me think of um, a concept that we haven't talked about, um, but Dan Dickerson, who was on the commission for like five years, he just left a year ago, brought up multiple times was this, uh, and um I'm probably going to get it wrong, but um, this idea of having kind of like a wilderness space in the park where it's kind of like an education zone where like people are using, you know, the trail maintenance would happen by hand tools or the kind of similar characteristics as you would have in like a designated wilderness area right next to the capital space. Um, I know Dan hasn't been part of these conversations, obviously isn't on the commission, but when I saw that email, I thought of Dan's idea and... I don't know if it's worth bringing up this late in the game. We'll see how Alec feels about, you know, using a hand tool to cut down a tree. That's been <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dane's not a hand tool. <laughs> I will challenge Alec to a cross cut. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I think I, I liked that comment from the, from the, I, I think it was a woman who sent that email. Um, Tasha too, I, it also left out though. So like, I have been very conscious of that mission too. It's a, it's like to preserve Hubbard Park's wildness for future generations. So like the implication is like, yes, it's wild, but the reason we're preserving it is for people to yeah. enjoy, I think. Um, and then the other piece of the history that's interesting is that the first landscape architect, the, the only landscape architect they got to work on the park had a very, I mean, it's like typical of that time, but a very like human centric view of how the park should be used and understood with carriage mm -hmm. paths and like very closely like tended flower gardens and all the rest. So like I do feel like it's a, it it was intended to be a balance, mm -hmm. um, but especially with the new property, I feel like there's a lot of potential for something for a wilderness area like what you're talking about. There's also a difference between I mean the word wilderness has been used for ages, but um, you know when Mr. Hubbard gave the city his land and said it to protect its wild character, it was sheep pasture. <laughs> So, right. um. <laughs> yeah, you know, I 
<laughs> I mean, this feels like a 30,000 foot view question and, and we should be way below that by now, right? A little this far along. But um, yeah. Emily, I struggle with that too, with how it's an urban park and literally every inch has been walked on and stepped on and whatever. And, and to what, do, you know, yeah, how do we, how do we at this, you know, so we're going to, we have this park that is good, that is tremendously used and loved and adored. But at the same time, how do we protect that wilderness aspect of it? And, you know, we don't want to, you don't want it to be Disneyland where it's manufactured, you know, uh, uh, but I don't know, it's a question I struggle with other, you know, if, if, if our, if our goal is a preservation, a preserve, well, then you can't, you have to make it off limits to any use whatsoever. Um, we don't want to do that. And I don't know, maybe there are sections we do and I, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, but I struggle with that question of how do we accomplish both of those. Um, now, to some degree, we have, I mean, I, I don't feel like the, you look at the state of the park now, and it's not a wasteland, it's not like, <laughs> um, it's it's still a forest, and it's still, it's still doing pretty good, um, and so maybe our goal is to make sure it, we, we keep going in that direction. Um, I don't know. And I think, I think we have, well, there are a lot of elements in here that strike that balance that you were just talking about, Emily, and, you know, in terms of like accommodating a wide array of different uses in the park and, um, you know, the, the, whilst also having that, you know, character of the very Northern part of Hubbard that we heard again and again, that people appreciate that wildness and the solitude and kind of maintaining that. And so, um, you know, I, I yeah. feels like we found that balance yeah. of space. Yeah. Everything. And and we're not proposing benches in that new no. portion along trails and the area that we were, I know they had a comment in their email about um, the playground, the play structures. Um, and we're proposing that in, you know, the meadow area right at the entrance, really. So not, you know, in the forest. Um, so I do think you know, the character of this plan is already supporting uh, keeping as much of the park wild as we can, um, while also, you know, encouraging all sorts of people to use the park. Great. Okay, that's helpful. Helps me. <clears throat> um, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, I wonder if we could include a map of like, in the management, I'm like making more work for myself here. But if we could make a map of, <laughs> of like, quarter mile because actually a quarter mile in the park is like pretty big right like the existing benches that are along the way that like one of them fell down a couple years ago but the ones that are going up to seven fireplaces they're like two there were two there's like one down by the intersection with the trail at the bottom of the hill and then there's one that was like kind of halfway down they're probably every 16th of a mile those exactly those were very close <laughs> yeah. together yeah. so like really we only need maybe like one on the way to seven yeah. fireplace and like how many benches are we talking here? You know, like yeah. kind of that idea. Right. This is a burning oh, question. Oh are, are there actually seven fireplaces or do we have to change the name? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm going to go count them tomorrow. Do we have to call it five fireplaces five. now? I think Alex told me they're five. <laughs> all right. We're all, we're all getting a little punchy now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I, this is kind of off topic, but I did want to follow up. So Emily, did you do the, that deed research? Like what happened with the turnstone research? Yeah, okay. yeah no she basically just did the deed research and okay. she didn't even do all of the deed research because the the parcel that was donated by or was in the hubbard family is only part of what is currently in the park because the park has grown so much yeah um for hubbard park so there's all a bunch of there's a section of deed research that we don't have and needs to be done but we don't have time <laughs> um so but you've been doing yeah. like the you've well, been doing some historical research that was not like didn't get done as part of the ecological assessment that I was yeah I was feel like yeah. trying to fill yeah. in some of the blanks by like um yeah. when I was when I did landscape history you like you overlap the the maps yeah to see like where the land is and try to do some of that to figure out like what the land actually looked like and also writing the narrative piece because she didn't write any yeah no, that's really that's great. I mean, I really appreciate like your filling in the gaps and your experience there. And it's just good to know for like moving forward with like proposals and like when we're asking for work to be done, because there was such great work that came from it and a big hole kind of, I guess, in our like narrative, the narrative piece 
you it's know. like a miscommunication i think about yeah. what we're getting yeah yeah, I didn't, uh, yeah. It's good um, to know. emily your work on the that narrative and like you know just pulling together all the pieces in the management plan like the context is so incredible i mean you've pulled that together quickly and very thoroughly your yeah. writing is amazing emily i was really oh. impressed i just like love the tone of the whole thing it's great yeah, yeah it was great, great. <laughs> um in terms of um I uh, things I've heard there may be some little gaps that you're working to fill in or whatever if you if if you want to let us know like what you need from us let us know um I know um I um just like a, a step that I have in mind that we haven't looked at quite so closely as the actions is the partners and the timeline and I would like to, Alec, if it's okay with you, sit down with you and take a closer look together at that timeline and the partners together and just see if there are people you know of or groups or whatever that are missing and just get your sense on like what's achievable and kind of realistic and makes sense for the timeline. Um, and then in the management plan, um, Emily, you had flagged the space where there's a gap still with like actions considered but not adopted. Um, I'm glad to help with that content and and comb through our past agendas and minutes and things like that. Um, and then, of course, you know, other people to weigh in on. Um, are there other kind of next steps that we want to tackle here um, to kind of put a bow on this by, you know, essentially in a couple of weeks? Could I, could I just couple, flag a couple of quick things before yes, answering that question? Um, they're all in goal three, um, objective C or action C, provide amenities that serve people with a wide range of abilities and interests. Um, so the ADA access to tuning fork stage, there, there's a very comprehensive ADA transition plan for Hubbard Park that I think we should just reference instead of saying that specific one. Um, uh, um, Alec, do you, could you... Um provide that as an, an appendix, I think would be helpful to put in if you could share that actual plan. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I'll just share the part about Hubbard Park because it's a citywide. Um, Great. It's a citywide survey. Um, and there's an action table that goes with it too. And um, the upgrading the equipment on the fitness trail, it was interesting, you know, somebody emailed about this or like, um, nobody you know, uses it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and it, yeah, it was interesting to me, we just sort of put it in here to upgrade that, but we didn't really have a conversation about whether or not we want to do that uh, or it would be worth it. It's quite expensive and a lot of work. So I don't want to have that conversation now. I just want to put a pin in that. Um, and then a similar comment, maybe even from the same person, installing natural player climbing structures for young visitors at Seven Fireplaces and the Wyndham Drive Meadow. That's, um, you know, it's another good idea. And um, also is expensive and a lot of effort. Um, playgrounds are, you know, a bit of a nightmare. Um, so to, you know, to, to do uh, legally, I guess I should say. Um, so wanted to put a pin in that one potentially for a discussion as well, just to think about whether or not that one should be in the plan as stated. Um, Alec, question, if, if we were to update the fitness trail, would that like trigger some of the same legal issues because it'll be structures that are probably used by children and da, 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 like uh that yeah I, my guess is yes but i don't know i don't know okay i guess i'm curious how the current well i wouldn't call it a playground but natural play structures came to be that are near um the, the ball field, field. yeah mm -hmm. um and whether this could follow a similar process or whether that process would no longer work. Yeah, yeah, those were built by volunteers um, in the Jeff era when, yeah, I think it was a little more of a wind in the hair approach um, as to what could or, or should be done, yeah. Okay. Well, let's put a pin in those Concept. I feel like they're pretty little and we could maybe talk through them in a couple of weeks. And Stephanie, I know you're not going to be there, but if you want to like email me or. I'm in favor of trying to do a play structure. I understand it's difficult, but uh, <laughs> I'm in favor. Yeah, I just want to be clear that we're all in favor of that. I, I could take or leave the fitness trail. Um, 
I mean, I, I think it's funny that, you know, people say no one uses it. And it's like, is that, you know, because it's not in good shape? Would people use it if it was there and nice? I don't know. Um, uh, I disagree. I think a lot of people use it. Um, oh, really? My kids love it. But whether or not, <laughs> yeah. whether okay. or not we want to invest of all the things we want to do, whether or not we want to invest in that thing in Hubbard Park. Okay. I think what triggered it for me was that person made a good point that like, we have to choose where these things are in the city and do we want them to be in the park. Yeah. My daughter loves the fitness equipment and she uses it all as play structures. I see Emily also nodding. I think yes. that's a common. <laughs> My kid isn't old enough yet. I'll, I'll, I'll be there soon, I guess. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Um, any other next steps to capture or um, before we kind of close out, I would like to hear, I know it, we're gone over a little bit, but Alec, you've been doing a lot of work and I would like to hear your staff update if we can move on. Sure. Yeah. Before we move to move on from this, just like logistically, I just kind of want to recap and then also talk about like the, the online, you know, just like how we're going to get it done. But it sounds like, you know, Kasha, you're working on the, the timeline and, uh, partner stuff with Alec. Emily's continuing to work on like the the master plan. Andrew and I are going to connect over the dog next steps. Stephanie's traveling and hopefully going to be okay after surgery and all that. Celeste is going to bed. But um, my question was okay because we've been doing all these different like online documents, editing it together, editing it separate. So I just want to get like all on the same page of if we have comments on the you know the goals objective actions from now until next week should we send those edits directly to you kasha if um that makes sense because we have like we all are shared on a google drive but my understanding is we can't all be working on it at once yeah we can't all be editing a document together so at this point i mean Anytime i think a lot across time that's Okay. All right. So maybe we well, should, I don't know. We yeah, just all are, but, um, you know. Okay. Um, so let's do, um, if you have edit uh, suggestions for the action table, send them to me, phone call, email, whatever. If you have suggestions on the management plan, kind of context narrative, send them to Emily. If you want okay. to talk dogs. Talk to Lincoln. Touch with me and Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Just so you know, I just wanted to get out there because I was confused after last about how we were editing the main plan, but Emily cleared that up for me. Um, and I have word now. So <laughs> that, that helps. Okay. Um, let's shift to um, a staff update. Alec? of the limelight here um i'll just try to hit the highlights since we're we're kind of late here but i think the really the biggest news to share is um that um the um project on gould hill road is moving forward um we got uh purchases in the last month a purchase and sale agreement with the landowners and um then went ahead and we were awarded um funding from BHCB to match the funding that we already have from the community forest program. Um, so we are moving ahead to purchase what looks like about 51 acres of land um, uh, that is attached to the North Branch Park and East Montpelier Town Forest, um, along with the 400 foot corridor that connects that land to Gould Hill Road on the town line, uh, which is really great. There's a lot of great things about it. Um, it's beautiful piece of land. And then I think just, yeah, having further dispersed access and places for people to explore. Very germane to the like wild parts of the park. Um, that is definitely a wild section of the North Branch Park or, you know, what will be the North Branch Park. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. That the, sorry, Alec, is that the John Kim property? Yes, yes, yeah. Commander Reed and John Kim are the landowners, yeah. Um, and they've been wonderful. That's great. Congratulations. Are they, sorry to interrupt. So this, this, you know, I'm looking at 
parcel viewer, which says it's 66 acres. Have they carved off 51 of it? Is that what they've done? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically, we purchased the, the portion that's not buildable, um, and they're keeping the buildable portion. Yeah. This is great. That's awesome. This is really great. Congrats. That's, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's sort of, it's a lot easier than the Hubbard Park exchange for a yeah. variety of reasons, mostly because it was cheaper. You've been on a roll, <laughs> There were some friendly, Alec. Friendly yeah. Donors. It's it's great. Is the community forest funding the same as was used to purchase the expansion or is that a new grant or new funding? Yeah, yeah, it's the same one. And basically what happened with that was that um, the community forest program could only supply 50% of our project costs and only certain project costs and just the way that the chips fell like their funding that we got was 258,000 but our the projects that costs that they could pay for were only 224,000 or something so we were leaving 30 grand or so on the table there and uh, this project just sort of happened to fit perfectly in and fits a lot of the same goals so I ran it by their grant administrator and he said yeah that that makes sense so nice no. work way to be creative yeah great out um, and then, yeah, moving forward on a lot of other projects that I listed, I don't want to go through them all, but I'm happy to answer questions, uh, if people have questions. I didn't have a chance to look at your staff update. Sorry, Alec, I will, <laughs> I'll add that to my list of things to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but I wondered and this, we don't have to answer that. You don't have to answer this now, or it also relates to management plan. Just in terms of like your staffing capabilities and the amount of manpower it's going to take to like implement and manage all the stuff we have in the management plan. Like, have you thought about that? Or I guess we ultimately will we'll do that as we go through the things in the management plan. But I wonder if it's something that we should consider when we're outlining the timeline how fast things, can you like, get it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What did you say, Lincoln? I said, how fast can you get it and done? And he just hit me, hit <laughs> right. me with the book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why I was going to follow up with Alec about the yeah. timeline specifically to make sure it could be. I think that's central to that question. Good. Yeah, yeah. To answer your question directly, Emily, I think, no, I haven't put a lot of thought into whether or not how it relates to our capacity. And I feel like I've also been chiming in at times when and it hasn't happened a lot, but at times when it, like we were talking about something that seemed not feasible um, for our staff. So now we'll take a closer look at it. Kasha and I will go through it together. And yeah, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of good ideas and it's 10 years. So yeah, yeah. And I think it also doesn't need to be all like completely feasible right now. I think it's okay if it's kind of a little bit aspirational, but oh. I think that we should be aware of like how aspirational it is. <laughs> right, right. Um, Alec, I'm curious to hear more about the U32 to VCFA and the State House path, both, because I know that those have come up, but I wasn't sure on like landowner permissions the whole way, or I was, you know, I, I wasn't sure if we're like working with on the design for U32. I guess I had, I probably missed another staff update, but hadn't realized like we had a contractor doing the design and like had linked together the land enough like I thought there were still gaps in there so just wanted to hear more about those two trails yeah yeah so we we had some grant money to do the design work for both of those trails um and so yeah I've been moving forward with that this fall and winter um the de the designer for the U32 trail is jo uh, Timber and Stone who did the accessible trail because the you know the hope is to make that universally accessible too and we do have landowner permissions all the way for the whole route. Um, so now we have a design. Now we need to go back to the landowners um, and say, this is the design. Do you still approve? <laughs> you know, and talk to them, you know, about what the trail looks like and, and feels like. And then the other piece of that is that um, the, you know, the city by me Elks Club came in after sort of a lot of this project was rolling and while it's wonderful and it gives us a lot more flexibility on that property it's going to slow down the project because now we're beholden to the process around that land so it's possible that this trail will come through you know maybe the process will finish up this year and they'll say 
one thing we know we want on Country Club Road is this trail. So you go for it. Um, <laughs> I would be thrilled about that. But, you know, it's possible the, they'll say we need another three years of study on what's going to happen here. Yeah. The design for that is similar to the accessible trail, the interpretive trail in the park, like gravel and wide and like generally not steep. That would be awesome. So that's a design choice that I think um, probably the landowners ultimately need to make. Uh, we chose to design it to that standard so that yeah. we have that option. Um, yeah. And so it's to be determined. It could be, I think, anything from, you know, a footpath to that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, I think based on the speed at which the interpretive trail has become like a beloved city trail in very short time it seems like there's like high demand for that type of trail yeah i hope so Agreed. um and actually just on the interpretive trail i forgot to put this in the staff update but we did apply for a thirty thousand dollar grant to finish the trail all the way to the tower um this summer so hopefully we get that and then oh. the state house path um we we are working on with uh, buildings and grounds on our MOU for the walking path because uh, it's 23 years old. Um, and then concurrently, there's a forest management plan being done for that parcel that has to fit into the MOU. And then concurrently, we're doing the trail design for this downhill mountain bike trail that would be parallel to the existing path. Um, so they're all kind of working at different speeds but um bgs is the gatekeeper for all of that so um we need to work our way through bgs and capital complex commission with all of those pieces and then ultimately yeah bring it to the parks commission to say this is what they've approved how does this fit into the you know the Hubbard park plan um and is that entirely on the state land or also on the parks land um it's on the state land um the 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 downhill mountain bike trail or the walking path the yeah. Mountain bike trail. yeah it's on the state land until you know there would have to be that little trail that sort of like goes down behind the tower like it's i consider it part of the state house path but it's like in yeah basically it's all on state land is the short answer there's a couple feet in the park but yeah you yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then who's funding the design for both of the trails? The VORAC program. Okay. Well, yeah, the VORAC grant. You actually got a VORAC agreement signed? No. <laughs> but <laughs> they, they're, they're claiming you can bill for expenses before you sign the grant. So I'm taking them, taking them at their word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's doing that. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah um cool well that's exciting and the gov community garden since you didn't read it emily that's the little community garden that's out by like route 12 on your way out of town yeah. it sounds like the city is lined up to purchase that awesome. where's that it's actually where's being that? donated it's actually being donated by the owner and the city the the fees are just for lawyer basically legal fees where is that it's on Elm Street, like out past where Pearl Street Motors used to be. Yep. That little community garden. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So that will be part of the parks too, or? No, no. Uh, I mean, it'll be public access and all that, but it'll be managed by the community garden. Cool. Yeah. And I was sorry to read at the end that the city will be looking for a new arborist. Yeah, yeah. That's a sad ending. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, but um, it's good to have, you know, a path forward too for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, any other questions on the staff update that you may or may not have read? <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry. I think, but with, with Donna here, I think we should recommend to, to the city council and the manager that Alec gets a big raise. You won't you won't get it, but we should right. recommend it. Yeah. yeah. I think the budget's locked in. Well. Oh, Don's giving us the, the thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Good try. Good try. Yeah. Good try. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much um, for another extra long meeting. Um, and Stephanie, I know, oh, you are gone for our meeting. Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, February 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. Again, hybrid. That is our usual parks meeting time. And Stephanie, you're going to meet, miss it. Yes. Um, I am wondering, um, I've heard back from some commissioners, but wanted to see if Wednesday, um, sorry, is it Thursday morning? Well, either Tuesday or Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. would work for a brief Parks Commission meeting to essentially probably just like 15, 20 minutes to finalize and adopt the management plan. Well, wouldn't it be Wednesday or Thursday? Um, Wednesday or Thursday. It should okay. be the 22nd or the 23rd. Okay. First for me. Either of those days. Um, I think the twenty third would be better for me. Okay. Either one works for me. Yeah, I mean, I can do that. It it will have to be brief. We tend to start. I mean, I'll be that'll be eight a.m. Uh, where I am, um, and we tend to start work pretty early. I think you said it was going to be oh, seven. Was it seven? Okay, then that should be fine. I mean, still like a half, less than a half hour, ideally. So if we check time zones and it is fact 8 a.m., is 9 a.m. on February 23rd also okay with everybody? Okay, so we're going to aim for 7 a.m. where Stephanie is, which we think is 10 a.m. Yes, it is 10 a.m. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So February 23rd at 10 a.m., um, and Lincoln could not be in person on that day. I'm wondering if we can have a volunteer to be in person on February 23rd at 10 a.m. I, I can do it. I can do it. Is that Alec? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Do we need a commissioner to actually be in person? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think we may need a commissioner. You can still, you can have a 100% remote meeting. Oh, but you do have to have it recorded, but you have Orca here. Donna, we were under the impression that that law expired and was not extended. No, no, you're still allowed to be fully remote. Um, you mean Lincoln's been going to all these meetings in person when he could have been remote? <laughs> I, I think there's great value in the in-person aspect. <laughs> I'm glad, glad we're doing it. And, okay, uh, well, you know, and Alex has been told differently, we're supposed to check it because Public Safety Authority has stayed 100% remote. Okay, so You're, we'll figure out an error. So I'll check it too. All right, we'll, we'll figure out that detail. But the moral of the story is that our next meeting will be February 21st, which is a Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then followed by... Um, February 23rd, which is a Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, uh, so that's a Thursday. I'm sorry, a Thursday. <laughs> I was trying to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think we've had enough for the evening. I believe we are ready to adjourn. Kasha, right. thank you for leading the discussion. Yes. Nice job. Oh, nice thank job. You everybody. Yeah. yeah. I really appreciate yeah. all the public, everything, yeah. everybody yeah. had such great things to say. Yeah. Thanks to all of you. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.